Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And God's blessings, contrary to what the world does, God blesses us when He gives us the assurance, the absolute assurance that He will do what He promised He would. God doesn't promise religion. He does not want you to have another religion. God wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. And this new life He wants you to have more abundantly is the change of mind, the change of heart, a new life. That's what God wants for you. I'm not here to praise the Universal Church. I'm here to bring to you the word of eternal life, the word that brings new life, the word that brings life with abundance, because that's what God wants for all of us, for myself, for yourself, for all of us. I don't know what your religion is. I don't know what your faith is. I don't know who you are. I don't know the type of life you live. But one thing I know, that you need a new life. You definitely do. Because if you don't have a new life, then this life that you are living up until today will continue to get worse. Why? Because this is the destination of people who do not know the project, the plan that God has for their life. They know religion, they know philosophies, they know the things of the world, but they don't know the Word of God. They don't. They don't know what the Word of God is. The Word of God is the Spirit. The Word of God is the Spirit of life. The Word of God is the Spirit of health, good health, the Spirit of victory. The Word of God is the Spirit that is new, of a new life, literally new, absolutely new. This is the idea that God has for you in mind, that the Spirit of God has for you. Pay attention to this text we are going to read from the Bible, and you are going to see that this is exactly what God wants for you. Pay attention. The Holy Spirit says that if anyone is in Christ, he's not saying here if anyone is in religion A, B, or C. No. He's saying if anyone is in Christ, which means if a person lives with their life in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they are a new creation. That's it. Does it have anything to do with religion? Not at all. It has to do with God Himself. Whoever is in Christ, meaning whoever lives their faith in the Word of the Lord Jesus Christ, this person has the thoughts of God. They have the thoughts of the Spirit of God. And obviously that whoever lives with the thoughts, with their thoughts in the thoughts of the Spirit of God, they have the life that God wants them to have. There's no doubt about that. That's what I understand by this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, which means everything becomes new. All things become new, brand new. For example, if you leave your car, the old car you have in the dealership, and get a new one, a brand new one, that it smells new still, that brand new car, right? You who've had this experience, you know what I'm talking about very well. The new life that God proposes is this, for you to be a new creation, a new person, with new thoughts, new heart, with 
a new perspective in life, a, a vision that is much broader. That is the will of God for you who are watching me right now and that perhaps have been living your faith in a religion or in a church. You have been placing your faith in the church. For example, you put your faith in the universal church of the kingdom of God. It's not the same thing. You have to put your faith in the word of God, the word that the universal church preaches and teaches and leads you to believe. This is the difference. If you place your faith in the universal church of the kingdom of God, then you are going to be religious. But if you place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that the universal church of the kingdom of God preaches and teaches about, then you are going to have a new life. And this is the reason why many people are inside of the churches, inside their respective religions, and they live a life that is getting worse each day, a meaningless life, a miserable life. And this is not God's will. God wants you to carry within himself his thoughts. Because if you carry God's thoughts in you, you are going to think like God. Yes or no? And then you are going to make choices. The choices God would make if he was in your place. Because with God's thoughts in you, you are going to have thoughts that are new, a new perspective. You are going to know how to choose. You are going to know how to make your choices, whether to get married or concerning your profession, your business, or your life in general. Whatever it is, you, with God's thoughts in you, by default, you have to have a new life. You have to have a new life because that is the faith. This is what faith is called. Faith is certainty. Faith. Faith is not a doctrine. It is an assurance, a certainty that God will do what He promised to do. And His promise for you, for myself, for all of us, is a new life, a life with abundance. That is the difference, my friend. And this is what happened in the life of Dr. Maria Bezerra. A lawyer, a very intelligent woman, capable, graduated, who thinks, who uses her mind. She graduated, she has a successful profession. However, only when she decided to embrace this living faith, she put her mind in the thoughts of God, the God the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God has been teaching about, only then her life changed. Let's watch now her testimony, please. When I was seven years old, I started to see visions, I heard voices, I had nightmares. I didn't have peace. My soul used to hurt. I was not happy. My name is Maria Bezerra. I am 52 years old and I am a lawyer. I had a very difficult childhood because I had a sickness that was incurable. My skin used to peel off and the doctors didn't know what I had. And there I was diagnosed with a sickness without any cause. But the certainty that they had it was that I was not going to be able to live. And from there on, my parents were so worried about what was going to happen to me. And they started to search and look for another way out. And I believe that they did a pact with another religion and everything that they used to say my father used to do and I was getting better my skin started to go back to normal but I was a child who had restrictions when I was seven years old I started to see visions I had imaginary friends I used to hear voice I couldn't sleep I had nightmares and every day that passed I felt like a sensation of stronger spirits 
I used to feel unwell many times. I used to faint and I never came back. And I used to wake up there in the spiritualist center seeking for help. And many times, many times when I would go there to take care of the dishes, the things that they had there on the altar of the spirits, I would faint and I wouldn't wake up and I would be there a long time unconscious. There was a certain day that I fainted in my home and my father, he was desperate. He called the witch doctor and she said like this, there's no way. If she wakes up and we don't do the ritual and she doesn't shave her head, she's going to faint again and she won't wake up. And then there was a desperation in my family because for us to do the ritual, it was very expensive and we didn't have the conditions to do so. But it was my life. My father said, no, we're going to make a way and we're going to do it. So we contacted families, friends. My father and sister, they took loans to pay for this. I did, and I stayed 21 days isolated. I did all the obligations, and I did three months of spiritism, and then another year of development, and then it started to continue going, and my life was dedicated to them. I would sacrifice my whole life, and I had nothing back in return, and I didn't have peace. My soul... It used to hurt. I was not happy because my family, we always were united, but always sick. There was always missing something. My dad was always sick. He had, you know, some improvements, but then my mom started to be sick. She started to forget about us. She started to forget about the things that she used to do. And every day it was just getting worse. We used to search for the doctors and all the doctors possible that we looked for. It was a very high price and there was no diagnosis for the sickness of my mother. The witch doctors, they said, you need to do a ritual to take this away because she's going to be well. And again, all the family, we got together to do this ritual, but it was so much more expensive and it was very different that humanly speaking we were not able to do it but we wanted to see our mother well so we did everything perfectly nothing lacked everything the way that they wanted to be done we didn't fail anything we were there completely obeying their rules after roughly not long after that maybe a month or two my mother started to feel sick again and she went to the a and &E and she died And there, my life just collapsed because we had hope that we were a family. But my mom, she wasn't there anymore. And my head started to say, what did I, what am I going to do with my life? I don't want to know any more about spiritualists. I'm not going to go and I'm not going to go to anywhere else. And I started to go to the cemetery. I would go and speak to my mom every single day. I had to go to the cemetery to speak to my mom. And little time that I used to fall asleep, I used to have a nightmare. It was like it used to go inside of me. It's like a knife that would go inside of my heart, inside my soul. It's something horrible. After some time, I was invited by a friend seeing my suffering he invited me and said I have a place that's going to change your life and I said I don't want any place I'm not going to no other place no there is a church the universal church there you are going to see it. you're going to be different and he insisted until one day my father said daughter go go and there in the obedience to my father I went When I arrived there, I was welcomed and the pastor came and spoke to me. There were two youths that were there. They were very friendly and they spoke to me. As the meeting was about to start, he said at the end, afterwards, I want to speak to you. I'm going to continue speaking to you and I'm going to give you a present. And I sat there in one of the first chairs and the pastor started to preach. He was, he was preaching and I didn't understand what he was saying. It was like there was a confusion in my head when the pastor said, Amen. I left the church quickly and I went my way and I got everything that I had. 
everything that I had related to the spiritism and the witch doctor, I took everything and I took it to the church. When I went into the universal church there, the pastor was at the door like he was waiting for me and I couldn't stand it. I just said, I don't want the life that I have, this God that you say all about, that you speak about, the pain that was inside of me was so great that I've never heard about God. And I said, I want here, what is it that I need for me to have this God that you're speaking about? And he said like this to me, I'm going to guide you. Do you remember? I said I was going to give you a present. I'm going to give you this present. God has prepared it for you, which is the book, The Secrets of the Occult. And I would go every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday to the church. I started to do the chain of prayer. He gave me guidance. I was freed. I was delivered. My deliverance were details that you don't forget. It marks your life. And on that Friday, when I came to the church and I said, Today, my Lord, if you are here in this altar, I'm going to leave here freed, delivered. And I left delivered on that day, freed. I left delivered, and on Sunday, I went to the church in the morning. And I said like this, Pastor, today I want to get baptized. And I got baptized. I got baptized in the water, seeking every day more, saying it was a Wednesday. And I said like this, Today I am yours. Today, if you want, you can come to me and fill me. Whatever you want me to do, I am here. I just don't want to go back without you baptizing me. Without you changing my life, everything that I need is you. And on that night, the Holy Spirit came over my life. It's unexplainable. It's something that we cannot even express the happiness and the joy, the God that I never knew and that I had never, no one had ever spoken to me there in the universal church. Someone spoke to me about, about him and presented to me this God and I wanted him and he accepted me. Everything changed. I didn't have any sickness anymore. My father, he didn't have any sickness. My family, I was able to eat of everything. I was able to eat everything and I could sleep. Everything to me is joy. I have love. I don't have like an upset face. I don't uh, treat people in a bad way like I used to do before. Today, I seek to help them. Those people who think there is no more life for them. But there is. I am part of the rescue group. You know that hug that God has given to us. And today he hugs me. He can also hug those who we go to rescue. Today I am married with three children. I am well succeeded in my profession. And most important is the Holy Spirit who abides inside of me. Because it doesn't matter. You have everything and not have anything. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have nothing. It is, you know, genuine, my joy. My soul doesn't hurt. I don't feel pain in my soul. It's a joy. It's a peace. I, The whole world can be crumbling down, but nothing affects me. Because the peace that God gives to me is eternal. If I have the Holy Spirit, I have everything. I don't need anything else.